This Santa Monica beachside space was once a sprawling mansion for actress, producer, and philanthropist Marion Davies and media tycoon William Randolph Hearst. Hearst had the property built in the 1920s for Davies, who was his mistress and longtime companion. They used to call the estate the Beach House, but the property is now known as the Annenberg Community Beach House and the Marion Davies Guest House. We're with Libby Pacheris, our main tour guide today. Libby, tell us about the site that we're at right now. Yeah, this is a really remarkable site. The story goes back to 1926 when William Randolph Hearst acquired 15 contiguous lots to put together a five acre beachfront property to build an estate for the love of his life, Marion Davies. From the 1920s to the 40s, Davies and Hearst lived in the main house during her acting career at MGM and Warner Brothers Studio. This is where we are now. This is the guest house. It gives you a good example of the overall scale of the property. This was the main mansion. And these were all the ancillary buildings that were located to the south. There were actually three additional guest houses. This is J. Paul Getty's beach house. A very young Marion Davies first captured her eye when she was a Broadway chorus girl. She was modeling and on the Broadway stage, but she had aspirations to become a movie star. And that's what the, brought them out to California. And this part of the Gold Coast, which was where a lot of the studio moguls and celebrities had their little beach cottages. It was a uh, you know, 20-minute commute to the studios in Culver City and just an idyllic location. Hers was the coveted party invitation. They would have big parties here, much like at Hearst Castle in San Simeon, 200 people at a time. And they, they like to dress up in costume. Yeah, and in the 20s and 30s, costume parties were really popular. The house was extravagantly furnished with things like Tiffany chandeliers and items Hearst collected on his European travels. It was a huge property. It was referred to as like the Versailles of Hollywood. A notable contributor to the estate was Julia Morgan, California's first female architect and the architect of Hearst Castle. She worked on both the beach house and the castle simultaneously for Hearst. She was brought in by Mr. Hearst because building on sand was a challenge, but Julia Morgan had an amazing background in structural engineering and took over the project in 1926 and completed this house in 1929. She was such an amazing woman who was a trailblazing architect at a time when women were not welcome in the profession. She became the first woman to get licensed as an architect in California in 1904. Her manner was quiet, but firm and she oversaw all her projects very carefully. Everything that went out from her office, she had reviewed and approved. She always added her own invention and refinement and delicacy to everything that she did, so it's very much her signature work. The bathrooms, are these original from the Yes, time? everything is original. Julia Morgan designed each of these bathrooms, and these tiles were all locally fabricated. They were from the American Encaustic Tile Company in Baron Vernon. So the tiles themselves are almost 100 years old. The main house was started by MGM set designer William Flannery, but Morgan joined early to complete the project, and the guest house was entirely her design. And this was a miniature version of the grand staircase. So this staircase matched what was in the yes. mansion. Davies sold the property in 1947. It evolved into a boutique hotel and then into a private beach club known as the Sand and Sea Club. After the 1994 Northridge earthquake, the property was out of service, reopening to the public in 2009 thanks to a grant offer from Wallace Annenberg. Now, only the guest house and main pool survive from the original architecture. This is one of the most amazing sites right on the Pacific Ocean with so much history. It was pretty scary. It was in disrepair. So what we tried to do was figure out what were the historic elements that could be preserved and to celebrate them. And the pool was still actually in really good condition because it had been covered up. And so it was actually really well preserved. So some amount of the tile was still intact and in decent condition. We found craftspeople that were able to recreate from the original tiles, new tiles, so the entire interior of the pool looks like original today. The new building is, is uh, very contemporary and, and there were a lot of questions about whether the new building should reference the original building or be contemporary and we believe it should be 
contemporary because it really shows the difference between the new and the old. And what we did is the columns that you see uh, in front of the new building are the same size and spacing and location as they were originally. If you look at the perimeter of the new building, there's the concrete walls. And the reason why they're there is to cut down the noise from Pacific Coast Highway. Without that wall, it was deafening on the site. We're now with Nan Friedman, the Beach House venue manager. Nan, what does the significance of this place mean to people today? Well, the Annenberg Community Beach House, we opened in April of 2009, and since that time, we've really been bringing to life the mission of the Annenberg Community Beach House, to be a public place open to all, with no membership required. It's amazing, it's beautiful, like wonderful part of the city, wonderful little enclave with just kids and community, it's a great place. Weather is beautiful, we love the sand and the great restaurant here. We love coming here because there are a lot of things for our kids to do and facilities to use. The space is helped maintain today by the Santa Monica Conservancy Volunteer Docent Program.